Greetings and blessed day to you once again, people of God, to start life later once again. And hoping the grace and the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ is with you until the end of time. We meet once again in yet another presentation inside the word of the Lord and praying that you are given the mercy, the grace, the spirit of forgiveness, the spirit of love against all manner of evil, against all manner of dark influence and praying that the spirit of the almighty continues to dwell within you until the end of time today i've been once again given yet another opportunity by the holy spirit to showcase and demonstrate the utterance of his word the word that gives life, the word that gives us spiritual composure, the word that is unique, and I'm praying that all those that have been listening, all those that have been following the Revelator 2024 sermons, you are continually being blessed. Today, I want to talk about the calling persecutions. Oh yes, I want to talk about the stripes of the calling. The stripes of the calling. The afflictions within the calling. The condemnations which are in the midst of the calling. The afflictions within the calling. There are so many negativities that come with the spiritual calling. And those negativities that come with the spiritual calling, an assignment that you are given by God, they carry a lot of burdens. They carry a lot of pain. And in this presentation, I'm going to be going through the life of the apostles as they were being trained ministry week by Jesus directly. Let's go to the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 1. And it reads, And when he had called unto him his twelve, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all men of sickness and all men of disease. Now these are the names of the apostles that were chosen. Simon, who is called Peter, Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother. Philip, Bartholomew, uh, Thomas, Matthew, the publican, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Lippias, whose name was Tertius, Simon, the Canaanite, and Judas Iscariot, who would also betray Jesus. These twelve sent Jesus forth, giving them a command and instruction, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans, enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. The question will be, why is Jesus is assigning his disciples? Why is he restricting them to go into the houses of Samaritans? And what significance or relevance do we get from the life of the Samaritans so that we can be able to have a description, a spiritual identity of a Samaritan, so that you understand why Jesus was restricting his disciples to go into the houses 
of Samaritans. The Samaritans, they are already considered as those that have already come to the kingdom. The Samaritans, they also represent those that are religious. The Samaritans, they represent those that already claim to be spiritual. The Samaritans, they represent those that have already came to church. And Jesus, knowing what a Samaritan is, he knew that there was no need for his disciples to go into the houses of the Samaritans, into the communities of the Samaritans. Why? Because there was no gospel they were going to preach in the houses of Samaritans. So Jesus is restricting his own disciples not to go into any city of Samaritans. But given any situation that there are some disciples that went and still preached to Samaritans, they suffered certain consequences. You don't know how complicated, you don't know how difficult it is to go to preach to people that already claim to be believers. You don't know how it is a task to go and try to convince those that already have doctrines and spiritual philosophies, those that already claim that they see visions, they dream dreams, those that already claim to be righteous. That is what Jesus was restricting his disciples. He knew that if any of his disciples would go there, they are only inviting persecutions. They are only inviting conflicts. not into the way of the Gentiles. The Gentiles are not just the sinners. They are those that have condemned the gospel before they hate it. Those that represent the atheists, those that represent the Antichrist, the, not just the unbelievers, an unbeliever is not a sinner because maybe he just needs the weight so that he gets converted and he comes back to Christ. But here when he is talking about the Gentiles, they represented a certain class of those uh, that can fight against you if you ever you try to show them light. And these Samaritans, these Gentiles, they are in the midst of us, they are within us, in, in our family, in our community, in our nation. They are all of. And Jesus then says, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And what does that mean? Go to the lost sheep of, of the house of Israel. It means there are those that are supposed to represent Israel. Israel represents not only the chosen nation, but the church. Meaning that there are those that are meant to be in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Those that have not yet been found. You remember the parable of the lost coin. Eventually, the coin was found I've seen it even when I'm doing soul winning that you can actually approach someone and that very person that you approach, you can actually tell that this soul was already destined to become part of the ministry. While the moment you find that soul, you won't even have any difficulties. You won't even have any labor. You won't even have any burdens after winning that soul even when you start giving him or instructions it becomes very smooth 
everything is easy I, i'm not saying soul winning is supposed to be automatically easy but i'm saying you won't have any other unnecessary patterns upon winning that soul to bring him in the presence of god but if you are going after certain spiritual characters that don't represent the sheep of the house and you are going after other spiritual characters be careful why because in your soul winning quest you are now attracting serpents into the house in your quest of winning souls you start attracting serpents souls that were never supposed to get their deliverance through you i've seen it in the ascension room how in my zeal in my love for the work of god i've gone an extra mile to winning souls uh, that i was not supposed to go after and we cannot call it winning why because there was a frustration at the end so in my quest of winning souls i realized i had actually used a hook not to fish the right product but you go there wanting to catch fish and you rather catch a serpent or you catch something else which is different maybe you catch an octopus or you catch a crab or a scorpion all those they can be found in the sea when jesus was giving his disciples assignments he say he said you shall now be called fishers of men why because they were fishing a different product earlier in their business where they were catching fish so it is possible that you have been sent to fish certain souls in the business of the kingdom of god which the product that we are aiming for is soul winning and then you go and you fish the wrong product you start fishing crabs you start fishing what are you fishing you are fishing different products scorpions there's snakes that stay in order and you end up frustrated in your calling and where are these frustrations coming from you are trying to win souls uh, that you have not been assigned by the holy spirit and sometimes when you win souls that you have not been assigned by the holy spirit which i have already explained it can't be winning why because there is a frustration at the end don't ever think that they won't have moments where they will be listening to what you are saying why because they want to hear also are you from our own kingdom the danger that is there in trying to preach the word to anyone that doesn't represent the lost sheep of the house is that you are trying to build a foundation on top of a ground of ignorance and when any storm comes it's going to wipe out the entire construction the entire plan that you had structured on the ground so jesus is restricting his disciples not to go to the samaritans who can also represent the antichrist in the church those that are in church but they don't want to follow the ways of christ the pharisees and the sadducees they were always in church but why did they were in church why did they were in the presence of jesus they never wanted to follow what jesus was preaching the gentiles they represent also another class of antichrist in the world which completely doesn't believe in christ those ones even if you send them evidence of the demonstration of power or anything even if you prophesy to them they will find something to scrutinize in the divine works of the spirit 
and jesus then says as you go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand heal the sick cleanse the, the lepers raise the dead cast out devils freely you have received and freely you shall give this is the part that many people have misunderstood that everything that a preacher must give should be for free tell me if everything that christ gave me to dispatch as a man of god was going to be for free how would i even reach you out with the same on presentations where i actually know that i use wi-fi where i actually know that i'm using mobile phones i'm using laptops we haven't even talked about the welfare of a man of god tell me how i'm able to go to the extent of even sending the files of sermon presentations the scriptures that need to be understood when jesus is talking about freely you have received and freely you shall give he's talking about what you have been given by the lord you have not been given it for yourself you have been given it freely so that you also give unto others and when you give unto others those that you are giving they must also have the reasoning that you need to butter your bread they must also have the reasoning that ministry has got uh, expenses the things that we have to explain on behalf of ministry all these things a doctor doesn't need to explain that you need to pay consultation a lawyer doesn't need to inform you that there is a certain fee for him or her to represent you it's only a preacher that has to explain himself time and again that after preaching i have a family back home after teaching the word after driving out demons the house of god needs to be swept the necessities that are needed just to clean the house of god just every activity needs to be enhanced by finances and jesus then says provide neither gold nor silver nor press in your places nor a script for your journey neither two coats neither shoes nor yet staffs for the workman is worth of his meat and into whatsoever city or town you shall enter inquire who in it is worthy and abide there jesus is instructing his disciples that into whatsoever city you enter inquire in that town who is worthy do you know what that means you don't just go around revealing certain things to certain people you don't just go around expecting everyone to believe in your calling i think i've been suffering from that because of the amount of conviction that i have received from the holy spirit the amount of love that i have for the work of god the zeal for the things of the spirit has affected me to the level that sometimes i get so blinded to forget that i'm not called for everyone not that i do this ignorantly not that i do this deliberately but the zeal pushes me to extremes which i sh- i must never reach but i only realize sometimes after frustration that i was not destined to even fish that kind of sheep fish that kind of soul fish that product which i believed was a fish yet it was a serpent And Jesus is saying, into whatsoever city you shall enter, inquire who in it is worthy. If the person is not worthy, if the house is not worthy, if the family is not worthy to receive your weight, if that community is not worthy to receive your weight, let your peace return unto you. Meaning, meaning, don't have anything to do with those people. Once you have realized that they have got nothing to do with the gospel that you are preaching, 
and if the house be worthy let your peace come upon it but if it not be worthy let your peace return unto you and whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words when you depart of that house or city shake off the dust of your feet to shake off the dust of your feet it means have nothing to do with those people anymore dear associate yourself with those people I've seen a lot of people that want to associate with the revelator. They want to link up with the revelator. They want to talk to me. They want to socialize with me. They want to debate with me, both at community, family, and ministry. But they don't want anything to do with my spiritual calling. And when I try to distance myself from these people, they want to raise allegations or accusations they want to paint me with the wrong character yet they forget that they are the ones uh, that have not accepted who I am I have accepted who I am and I'm the revelator and why is it difficult for you to accept that the Lord has called me to preach his word and I live by a certain uh, code you don't believe in what I believe in, but still you are trying to associate with me. And when I distance myself from you, why can't you understand that we are two different people who represent two different worlds? This is, this is exactly where persecutions begin. Why? Because you are trying to force me to become what I'm not. And then when I try to introduce you to my spiritual identity i try to introduce you to my spiritual life i try to introduce you to my christ principled life you think i'm trying to monopolize you you think i'm trying to divert you from your own understanding of the things of the spirit you think i'm trying to divert you from your own ministry it becomes a tug of war beliefs contradicting theories clashing misrepresenting and misinterpreting each other misquoting each other arguments quarrels strives all these they are amongst the believers why because the boat of christ right now is in total mayhem the boat of christ is in total conflicts because of competition that gives birth to divisions why because everyone wants recognition everyone wants to be it everyone wants power and jesus says beyond behold i send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves meaning that when the when jesus was sending his disciples as sheep he was sending them as disciples that would be undercover you know the dangers of sending sheep in the midst of wolves is that the ships they are vulnerable to wolves but again the phrase itself the spiritual rickly is trying to say you can be as calm as a ship amongst the ravening wolves meaning that this is a character of the calling when you are dealing with a certain forces the character of the spiritual calling does not need you to use anger and frustration the character of the spiritual calling does not need you to end up using force or violence you need to be calm you need to be gentle you need to have the meekness in that type of calling why was it you are going to deal with people that will be so difficult you're going to be dealing with people that are so contradictory people that change every word that you have said they want to misrepresent everything that you're saying so you will need to be equipped but beware of men for they will deliver you up to the councils and they will scourge you in their synagogues 
you'll be scourged, you'll be beaten not outside the temple but in the synagogues meaning that the people that are going to persecute you the very first batch of the people that are going to persecute you they are christians the ones that claim to be believers they will start persecute, persecuting you thinking that they are doing god a service thinking that they are offering god a service and they will start fighting you why did you think that the people that are going to fight you they are people in the world why did you think that the people in the world they are the ones that are going to give you a, a lot of problems you are completely lost your oppositions your enemies your contenders those that are, will try to compete with you are necessary they are in the house of god this thing i've been trying to eye open the believers why we are trying to look for unbelievers in the world as our oppositions is because we are trying to run away from the reality that is right in front of us the people that are fighting us they are not outside the church the people that are fighting us they are not outside the kingdom of god your oppositions have been created within you yes you can go ahead continue rebuking the devils continue rebuking uh, forces they play a role but uh, your direct opponents that you're looking face to face against it's not even people at the nightclub it's not even the prostitutes in the lodge it's not it's not even the murderers that walk at night it's not even the thieves and the robbers that only want money from you even if they come across you they're going to threaten you give us the money once they get the money they've got nothing to do with you they've got nothing against you but the people that are personally against you the people that want to see you going down the people that are jealous the people that have got envy the people that want to compete with you unnecessarily the people that don't want to hear about your light the people that want, don't want to hear about your spiritual uh, impression the people that don't even want to see you rising they are not outside the church they are not outside the kingdom of god they are also the same people that think they are doing god a service there are also people that are thinking that they can speak in tongues better than you there are also people that also believe that they have got a spiritual calling even though they don't have a spiritual calling they might be plumbers electricians drivers lawyers pilots farmers they know that they don't have a spiritual calling and why least they know that they don't have a spiritual calling they still want to prove unto you that they have a spiritual calling they still want to prove to you uh, that they have also been given the light by god to preach to you this is the confusion that lucifer is uh, imparted inside the body of christ when you go to a doctor you pay a consultation why because you are paying you are compensating for the lack of knowledge that you you have failed to have in the medical field you go to a mechanic and engineer you are compensating for the lack of knowledge that you have in the mechanics the engineering everywhere where you go when you fork out money you are compensating money for the lack of knowledge lack of expertise lack of lack of ability but when people come into the house of the lord when people come into the things of the spirit they don't have respect and honor for a man of god they don't have respect and honor for a spiritual man who understands the things of the spirit you're coming from a ministry uh, that is a teaching ministry and you want to teach a man of the realms you want to teach a man uh, that operates in the realms you want to teach a man that is teleporting you in the realms i want to teach a man that is sending you into dreams and visions the broad daylight you want to teach a man that is operating in different dimensions of the spirit 
You don't even cast out demons. You don't drive out demons. You know nothing about the things of the Spirit. What point are you trying to prove? There is no significant point you are trying to prove. There is no significant point that you are trying to prove by proving nothing at all. You don't have a calling. Let those that are called speak on behalf of the things of the Spirit. Let those that have got the anointing upon their heads speak on, speak on behalf of you. You are just a civil servant. I don't know what you're doing. You are just a plumber, an electrician. You did a course there at the college. You are finishing your last year, your last semester at the university. But yet you want to define the things of the spirit. You want to explain the realms. You don't even have the knowledge of the things of the spirit. You, are, you have to consult scripture for you to understand each and everything around you. This is why Jesus is sending his disciples as sheep in the midst of the wolves. But beware of men, they will deliver you up to councils and they will sketch you in, the, in their synagogues. And you shall be brought before governors and kings for my name's sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. But when they shall deliver you up, take no thought, do not try to overthink how and what you shall speak for it shall be given unto you in that very same hour what you shall speak meaning that in that very same hour when you shall be brought up when you shall be given an opportunity to speak you shall be given it shall be given unto you the capacity to define certain things of the spirit that they thought that you were not away it shall be given unto you again the opportunity to start preaching unto those that want to persecute you it shall be given unto you the opportunity to eye open spiritually those that believed that you are blind why is it those that are of the dark world have entered your territory you start you shall start preaching the gospel of jesus christ unto them we as the believers of jesus christ have been given the capacity to preach the gospel in any place at any given time for it is not you that shall speak but the spirit of your father which speaketh in you and the brother shall deliver brother up to death and the father and the child and the children shall rise against their parents and cause them to be put to death these are now conflicts that even start at family level you remember that young man that said master can i first go and bid them farewell those that are at my house and jesus began to lecture this man giving a parable description of a man that is on a plow and then he says by only looking back you are not fit you are not worthy for the kingdom of god jesus knows that families are going to get divided because of this gospel jesus knows that families are going to get divided because of the kingdom of god this thing of saying we worship one god is, is a lie it's a theory we don't worship the same lord the conflicts that are amongst the believers they are more critical than the differences between those that are in the world the people in the world do have differences there are also divisions in the kingdom of darkness this is why they are politicians but those politicians they've got moments where they are able to sit down and they iron out their differences but don't ever think you can gather all the preachers in the body of Christ and make them sit down to iron out their differences. This thing 
is a virus it is a cancer inside the system of the body of christ inside the preachers and i doubt if it is ever going to get healed until jesus comes back this is why the scripture is saying many shall come unto say many shall come unto me saying master we drove out demons we cast out demons we healed the sick we gave to the needy we did this and that but i shall tell them i shall rebuke them i shall declare unto them i never knew you you workers of iniquity is because there is a lot of hatred there is a lot of hatred being dispatched amongst believers amongst preachers amongst those that we expect to be the doers of the word we are not spreading love we are spreading hatred we are spreading jealousy we are causing unnecessary competition everyone wants to speak everyone wants to be hated everyone claims to be spiritually gifted everyone who just sees a vision they already declare they've got a calling just to cause confusion no one wants to listen to someone else no one wants to follow behind the other and no one wants to be told what to do so there is a lot of confusion and this is breeding a lot of persecutions most of these persecutions they are coming from within us they are no longer coming from the devil we are hating each other we have gone even to an extent of wanting to kill each other for the sake of the gospel and jesus is saying you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake but he that endureth to the end shall be saved but when they persecute you in this city flee to the other city that is the way that the revelator moves whenever they persecute me in a certain city i move to the next city they won't be able to get hold of me i'm telling you they will never be able to reach out to me i'm a rolling stone whenever they want to persecute me you know how paul left that city he left that city while he's in a basket child of god there are things that can never reach out to an anointed man no matter how negative they are jesus will always give his servant the way out it is not enough for the disciple that he be as his master and the servant as his lord and they have called the master of the house bills up how much more shall they call them of his own household if they've been able to say bad things about our master lord jesus christ how much shall they name you you that has been sent by the master fear them not therefore for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed and do not fear them which want to kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear them which are able to destroy both the soul and the body now get this jesus is trying to alert you that no matter what kind of persecutions you come across i'm there with you even if they kill this body but they're not going to be able to reach your soul think not that i'm come to send peace here on earth i came not to send peace this is jesus but a sword for i'm come to set variances differences against father and mother daughter against mother brother against brother a man's foes shall be they of his own household meaning that your enemies your oppositions shall come from your very own household he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me therefore be prepared to carry your cross therefore be prepared to preach the gospel to the fullest without being compromised without being 
limited without being minimized even by those from your family child of god i'm here to present the calling of persecutions the calling of rejections the calling of afflictions the constraints inside this calling in the name of jesus <laughs>